this is going to be difficult. Um, I consider it an honor and a privilege to speak about my friend, my chiropractic brother, and a chiropractic pioneer, Frank Strell. He was the second Dabsey in recent years to set in the HOD. His absolute love for advancing the profession through his practice and through his teaching skills at national and across the country spoke volumes to his commitment to our beloved profession. Frank also loved his fishing, his boat, his golfing, and oh yes, all those practical jokes and emails. Frank was a perfectionist. He was always reading clinical journals to keep up on the latest natural medicine treatment techniques for his chiropractic specialty that he pioneered. He was this country's best chiropractic and natural medicine gynecologist and saved many lives and improved hopeless outcomes in thousands of female patients. If I had a complex gynae case, I would send them to Chicago to see Frank. If he had a complex cancer case, he would send them to Tulsa, Oklahoma to see me. That was the relationship that we had. He always said that was the way it should work within our chiropractic discipline. We needed to use our chiropractic specialists more and refer amongst our chiropractic family. And everyone in the room knew about the practical joker, Frank. Getting little gad gifts from Frank at conferences or getting those hilarious jokes on email was a staple. And I gotta say, God, I miss those. Then there was the family man. He adored his wife, Nellie, and his son, Matt. Every night when the day was done at our ACA or CDID conferences, he would call Nellie and tell her about how the day went and that he loved her. I know. I was standing there in the room on several occasions when he did it. Too many to count. I also had the distinct privilege of meeting Frank's son on several occasions when Frank and I would get together at the end of the business day and the conversation would turn to Matt. I, uh, Frank's eyes would literally light up. He was so proud. I was teaching at the long range planning, uh, or excuse me, the license renewal seminar in Branson, Missouri, the last February in July when I got uh, a phone call on my cell phone around 9 p.m. that night. I recognized the number and it was Frank. I answered the phone and his very first words out of his mouth were, Mike, this is Frank. I'm in trouble. I was diagnosed with lung cancer. What do I need to do? So I sat down on my bed and I said, Frank, I'm, I'm here for you, buddy. Get out a piece of paper and a pen and let's go through your action steps that you need to take. And then we spent the next hour going over strategies. I firmly believed that if anybody could beat multi-lobed lung cancer, it was Frank. Then I want to fast forward to Portland last summer. Frank was determined to make that meeting while on oxygen. Everybody in this room remembers that. With a primary care symposium being held in conjunction with the HOD, he dearly wanted to present. At the end of the HOD meetings and the night before we were both to present on that following Sunday morning, I was in Frank's room at his request assisting him with his IV. At the same time, Nellie was also going through chemotherapy back in Chicago for breast cancer and Frank was worried sick about her, not about himself. We also talked about Matt and all the impressive accomplishments at his young age. 
When he finished his IV, I gave Frank a big hug and I left his room and that was the last time I saw Frank. I was the first presenter on that following Sunday at the primary care symposium. Second, uh, Frank was supposed to be second. Immediately following my presentation, I had a very tight window of time to get to the airport and make my flight and I didn't turn on my cell phone until after my lecture whenever I was on my way to the airport. Little did I know that Frank had called my cell phone and left me a message to tell Vern Sabo, who was in charge of the educational symposium, to say this, to say that he was so sorry that he just couldn't get up enough energy to make it to the lecture room to present. He was so apologetic on my voicemail. Of course, that was Frank thinking that he let the ACA and the doctors down by not being able to present. At the funeral, Dr. Tennant reminded me that uh, those uh, in attendance found out that uh, Frank's early life name, nickname was Skippy. And, uh, and Dr. Tennant said that had we all known that in this body early on, we could have had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> But I know, we all know, that all the chiropractic students' lives that he touched with his expert teaching skills, all the lives that he touched in his practice, all the ACA leadership lives that he touched with his committed efforts to advancement, there is no doubt that the world's a better place because Frank Strell cared. Nellie wanted me to make sure to thank all who contributed to the ACA Strail Benefit Fund. Uh, she uh, said it had been a huge blessing and that both she and Matt were so grateful. Nellie also wanted you to know that even though the difficult times, uh, with the difficult times of late, there have been many blessings. The most poignant were the small Christmas gifts that Frank purchased from the vendors at the Portland uh, ACA House of Delegates meeting for Nellie and Matt and that he told them about these gifts prior to his death he said he wished that there could be more of them but he just didn't have the breath to keep going I want to thank you Nellie for sharing that story with us I miss you, dear friend, as I know a lot of you do, too. I know that you're keeping heaven filled with all those email jokes. God bless you, Frank. I'll never forget you. Whenever there's a mic in front of me, I take advantage of it, too. Uh, Frank would have been so thrilled that I'm here today. He was always trying to bribe me or find some hook to get me to come along. Um, but I felt that I was in his way and would slow him down from all the people he wanted to talk to and the things that he wanted to get done while he was here. Um, he was supported and sustained through the cancer battle, not just by Matt and me and our local church and our local friends, but as professional friends around the country. As a matter of fact, in the beginning, you were the only ones that knew that he had cancer. Uh, we kept it secret locally so that we could protect the practice. And I just want to thank you for your friendship with him over all the years, for loving him and embracing him and making him part of this group, for giving him a place to serve where he could feel like he could make a difference. He loved the profession. He loved the ACA. He loved helping to advance it. And that's something that can't be done by one person. It has to be done collectively. And amazingly, you've done a wonderful job together. And uh, Matt and I also want to just follow up on what Mike said, how we appreciate the way the ACA has stepped up to help us during what are incredibly difficult times when mom and dad both have cancer. It's like, wow. Um, helping us, helping Frank get home from Portland. Um, we were at the ICU and I felt like I saw an angel of mercy and it was Daryl Wills. Don't know how he found us. <laughs> Don't know where he got there. But um, suggested right at that point the um, air ambulance fund and more than $15,000 was raised to cover that $23,000 trip 
that insurance didn't cover. So that was a huge, and practical, and wonderful blessing. Every single card that you sent, every single phone call, I cried tears of joy over each one of them. So you could take them to the DNA people and get them tested. Um, really, they brought joy and strength to us, and they've been looked at numerous times. And I just want to thank you for that. Um, and to say that we've been through deep waters and have been sustained is just a slight understatement if you knew all the details of the months. Um, but it's been through you guys, and we thank you so much. And Matt and I, in our little ways, will want to contribute to the ACA in the future because we know how Frank loved you, and you loved him, and in turn, you loved us and shared that with us. And so thank you so much for everything, more than we could ever say. Thank you.